Hi, I'm Elizabeth Snipes, and I'm teaching Introduction to Astronomy this fall, 2013. And you should be listening to this because you are taking it this fall from me. And since you're getting lab credit, um, you're going to have to do some labs. And actually, you need to complete four lab activities. Um, and they're relatively painless. Actually, in astronomy, the labs are like the best. So the broad types of, um, of astronomy op opportunities you have is um, these are called at-large opportunities. And I don't know if that's very descriptive, but at-large, what I mean to say is you can do them on your own. Um, as opposed to scheduled labs. So a whole other document you have available to you under doc sharing, this one and all of the lab documents I'm going to show you, you can get off of the, the website for the class. But um, uh, these you do on your own. So um, you need to have four labs completed. You can do four at-large labs or, or four scheduled labs or two at-large labs and two scheduled labs. You get the idea. They need to add up to to be equal to four. So let's take a look at your opportunities here. And again, I'm just going through them. I may, in some cases, go through them kind of quickly. Um, but you have these available to you, these documents, and you can ask me any questions throughout the semester, obviously. So um, first off, let me go ahead and point out that, let me grab my little pen here. Um, you need to actually, I said four labs, but two of those labs need to be turned in by October 18th. Now, if you don't have um, any labs turned in by October 18th, then those two labs, two out of four, you get a zero, okay? Hope that's, you understand. And then the next two labs need to be turned in. You can turn them in early, but the last day to turn in your lab three and four is November 29th. So be sure to mark those on your calendar. And I do have a calendar coming up, so hopefully that will help. Now, the first thing that you can do on your own is what I call Constellations Lab. I know I have constellations of the zodiac here, but they don't have to be. Only certain constellations are those 12 or 13 constellations of the zodiac. So, basically, what this tells you is I want you to print out a sky map. And my favorite place to get my sky maps from are skymaps.com. And now the thing about the nighttime sky, and we'll talk more about this in lecture, is you see different sets of, of stars up there. And of course you probably already know we call these sets of stars constellations. So you're going to need a sky map for the given month. So you print out a sky map, you write the date on it. Let's see, what do we need to identify? Uh, yeah, write the date, write when you looked at it, write where you were basically, and mark up the constellations and you get credit, okay? So notice you don't need a telescope, you don't need binoculars, okay? So that is definitely one that is definitely one opportunity. So the next opportunity, or actually I kind of have a cluster of them, and this would involve a little bit of homework on your part and actually the other thing it will involve on your part is you have to have a telescope. So notice for these viewing the planets, you need to have a telescope. And you'll be like, Mrs. Snipes, I don't have a telescope and my student aide won't buy a telescope for me. Well, okay, then these won't be for you. But if you have a telescope and you can use, there's all sorts of different ways to find out where the planets are. Now these are kind of an assortment up right now, actually. Right now Saturn is... Um, getting kind of low in the evening sky and Jupiter is rising pretty darn early. <laughs> it'll rise early, it'll rise later and later. Sorry, it's rising late. Yeah, it'll rise earlier and earlier. But anyway, um, here's another opportunity f for you. Now, with each of these things you do on your own, there is a documentation section. So look at that carefully and make sure you want to get full credit. So moving down, now, number five here, you don't need binoculars, excuse me, you don't need a telescope, but you do need a pair of binoculars. Either a pair of binoculars or a telescope, and basically with your binoculars probably, I want you to take a look at the moon, and I want you to draw the moon. Okay, here I say sketch. And then also under your documentation, notice that I want to know date and time, and generally speaking, um, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, I think I do say write a paragraph, so I want to sketch in a paragraph. And you might not be the world's greatest artist, but hey, you know, just draw what you see. And you might want to read up on the moon, kind of what you're seeing, or, or um, if we've covered that in lecture, 
you'll know all about the mare and the highlands and craters and things that you can see just with binoculars looking at the moon. It is an awesome sort of sight. So here's another opportunity for you, and you're just going to kind of have to keep an eye on whether this one will work or not. Again, it's a naked eye sort of thing, um, and it's called uh, a meteor shower, and you're probably familiar with them. Um, and meteor showers, by the way, occur because the Earth, as, now this isn't the Earth, that's my drawing for the sun. <laughs> okay, the Earth is orbiting the sun. Okay, and what's happened in the past is that we have had comets go close enough to the sun that, now this is my comet, let me grab a different color. Here's my comet. Ooh, we've got a comet coming up for the uh, first pass um, this fall. But anyway, so this is a comet, and as it close, gets close to the sun, the comet starts to break up. So here in the comet path, we have a bunch of debris, okay, pieces of the comet. Comets are kind of uh, dirty snowballs sort of thing. So they leave kind of their guts as they get close to the sun. Anyway, so as the Earth, let me get back to my purple, as the Earth passes through, as the Earth orbits the sun and as the Earth passes through that debris left by a comet, then we have what we call a meteor shower. So we have extra sort of kind of rocky material falling through the Earth's atmosphere and making these streaks. Anyway, <laughs> uh, meteor showers, the best time for meteor shower is when we have no moon, which is called new moon. If the moon is in its new phase, then there, you're more likely to see those uh, streaks, right? So it's kind of a, kind of a tricky thing. Uh, we generally have certain times of the year that we have windows for um, making going through this debris of the comet as we orbit the sun. So I've written down the um, Draconids, by the way. There is a constellation called Draco, and so the meteors appear to come from, um, the Draconids appear to come from the constellation Draco. The Orionids are as a meteor shower that, that look like they are all originating from Orion. And guess what? The Leonids coming from the constellation Leo. Anyway, so I think I said just a little bit ago, eh, you just can't necessarily count on this, but it's a cool way to get credit. I think I left the criteria that you need to see at least five, I'm kind of trying to read in here, um, five meteors to have it count. So that's a thought. Let's see. Um, and kind of write what you see. Uh, the next one, planetarium. Again, something you can do on your own. So number seven, um, da -ba -da -ba -da. where are the planetariums? Well, they're, you have to go out of town. <laughs> the difference between a planetarium and an observatory is observatories have telescopes and planetariums generally kind of have cool, uh, uh, um, uh, they're like an IMAX when I think of a, a planetarium that show you the stars and kind of talk you through constellations. So um, you can go to Chicago, they have a cool planetarium, um, or I know Des Moines has one, um, St. Louis has one, so that sort of thing. And to get credit, you're going to need to write a paragraph. And also notice that if possible, and I've had some creative ways to kind of prove that you were there, <laughs> uh, that sort of thing. So now the last one is called a moon journal. Again, you can do this on your own, and I'm going to go to the next two pages to kind of show you what I'm after for a moon journal. But mostly when you think of a journal, basically you are day after day kind of recording something, and that's exactly what I want you to do with the moon journal. So hold that thought. So here you can see for the moon journal um, things that I want you to record, and I do want these 28 days consecutively, if at all possible. I kind of gave some students recently, I said, oh, if you miss up to five days within those 28 days, don't worry too much about it. But honestly, the magic, the, the thing about 28 days is that's the number of days it takes to complete one phase cycle of the moon. So um, that's kind of the special thing there. So I want um, date. Um, and I want everything. So I want date, I want time, weather conditions, um, the phase of the moon. And honestly, uh, that's easy to uh, look up. And I'm going to go ahead and post under doc sharing kind of hints on depending upon the phase of the moon, where and when to look for the moon. 
okay? So, and when you see it for a given day, what direction, uh, generally speaking, was it? And then over here, I just have kind of general comments. And somebody asked recently, what are you after for comments? And I don't know, any special things, anything interesting that you want to add. So 28 days, uh, Moon Journal, you can go ahead and get started on that right away. So this document goes with the Moon Journal, and um, it just basically for each column kind of uh, tells you what I'm after. So let me know if you have any questions. So now on to, those were all things you do on your own. Now this is called Addendum 1, okay, and I think I need to start showing students the things that they can do on their own, like I just showed you and then show them this addendum one because these are all scheduled which means you have to be at a certain place at a certain time to participate in these labs and sometimes students will say well I can't make it thus and so and I understand you know especially with online students you're not counting on having to make it somewhere at a certain time I will say that there are some awesome opportunities here so, uh, scheduled labs. Now I have, I think there's scheduled labs uh, number one through five coming up in this document, and they are all labs that I host, okay? And so you are going to need to know from me um, if that lab is a go or not, okay? Uh, the thing about astronomy is we are at the mercy of, um, since we're visual astronomy, not radio astronomy or some other sort of astronomy, we are at the mercy of the clouds. Cloud cover doesn't take much clouds to just kind of throw off your ability to see these cool things in the nighttime sky. So, um, when I've scheduled a lab, like I said, one through five coming up here in a minute, I have both a, a primary date, which I'm hoping goes, and then I have a backup date called the secondary date. So I've gone ahead and given you my phone number, okay, and basically what that will be is it will call into my uh, office, and you can listen to my outgoing message to see if on a given day that lab is a go or if that lab is canceled. Now, here's the deal though, and you can, I've tried to describe that this in my document here, if you, um, if the first lab is canceled, the first try at a particular type of lab is canceled, the primary date is canceled, the secondary date is going to be a go. Let's say it's cloudy the first try and it's cloudy the second try. Well, we're going to go ahead and meet that second try and do something. So I hope that works for you. Okay, let me know if you have any questions. Um, so let me kind of talk you through, but before we go on to the next part, let me kind of emphasize it says, uh, right, where is my, oh, there it is, right here, a few things. It says, in order to receive full credit, basically all you need to do is to describe in a paragraph or so what you saw, okay? Neatness is most appreciated. Now, remember, I remind you that two labs are going to be due um, by October 18th, okay? You have to have two labs after October 18th. I'm going to put a zero in for those first two labs if you don't have anything. And then labs three and four, the next two labs, are due um, November 29th. All right? Okay, so here are the scheduled lab opportunities. Now, I probably should see this first one here. I probably should go ahead and knock that down to item number five because here's where students roll their eyes and they're like, there's no way. There's no way I am getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go see stars. But it's just a thought. It's an opportunity for you, right? So notice that the first try is going to be October 8th, okay? And they'll locate 5 a.m. This is a morning lab. And the location for this one and the next one is a place called the Woody Observatory Complex. And under Doc Sharing, I have a map on how to get there. Okay, let's just say it's cloudy on October 8th, then the secondary date is going to be a go for sure. Okay, even if it's cloudy, then on October 15th, we're going to go ahead and do something out there at 5 o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> so it's just a thought. Taking a look at item two here, 
Uh, two is also at the Woody Observatory Complex. And notice the dates, um, late October, October 22nd, and November 12th. Okay, um, so remember then, in this case, for instance, if the primary date goes, if it's clear on October 22nd, we meet at 6.30 um, out of the Woody Observatory Complex, then that date of November 12th goes away. Okay, does that make sense? I hope it does. All right. Um, and I'm going to show you where that is here in a minute with the map. Uh, the other, the next three, honestly, are the location. I'll just kind of point that out to you right quick. The location is all at the Keokuk campus. Now, um, if you think Keokuk's too far to drive, then don't drive to Keokuk. <laughs> um, so the first, this one up here, what I've done is to pick a time when the moon is relatively, when the sky is relatively dark, the moon is near its new phase, okay? Because I want to try to kind of get as, as um, dark skies as possible to see the constellations and those wispy things in the nighttime sky. So our first try at that actually is coming up uh, as I'm recording this, and it's in about a week, August 28th. Um, the second... Um, the secondary date, if we're clouded out for the 28th, will be September 25th, okay? Um, then this lab down here, item number four, we're going to look at the moon. And they say the best time to look at the moon is um, a crescent pushing first quarter. So I've tried to kind of pick out some dates that will work well for that. Again, it's at the Keokuk campus. And um, basically, if you're familiar with Keokuk campus, it only has one big parking area. And so there's a grassy area on the other side of the college from um, the parking area. The parking area is here. Okay, the parking area is here. Here's the college. Okay, and here's the grassy area. And it's basically up here in the grassy area. <laughs> All right, so that's where uh, those two labs will be. Um, but those are both at 9 p.m. Now, the last lab is an opportunity, after we've talked about the sun, hopefully we'll have some sunspots, to take a look at the sun um, carefully with sun scopes. And notice those are both going to be the primary date. Hopefully we'll be able to see it on October 31st um, at 11.30 in, in the morning, so that's a little before noon. Um, we'll look at the sun. If it's cloudy that day, our secondary date is uh, November 7th. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions about that. So, um, now these are some opportunities. They're scheduled in that you have to be at a certain location at a certain time, but I'm not hosting them, right? Okay, so um, this first one is a good one. Um, and if you don't uh, make it out to the Woody Observatory Complex uh, this semester, because it, you know, it just might not work for you, I do encourage you to make it out there sometime. And you can go any time as a member of the public, uh, first and third Fridays, um, and only if it's clear, though. If it's clear, we'll be open to the public for public viewing, and if it's not clear, we don't open up. So that's a thought. First and third Friday of every month, that would include, you're going to be able to catch the months of September, October, and November. So... Um, and, oh, I know, sometimes people say, well, well can I go to the Witte Observatory more than once? And, and the answer is yes, definitely. Each time you go, just write something up, and it counts as a lab. Um, this other one is kind of cool. The, the Cedar Rapids um, amateur astronomer, astronomers have uh, uh, I'm an observatory, observatory kind of like the Witte Observatory Complex, except it's bigger. And... Um, it is located basically, and I have a map to show you, but basically to get to this one, it's farther than the Witte Observatory Complex, but you go, um, like you're going to Cedar Rapids, so you go past Iowa City from Burlington, and before you get to Cedar Rapids, you turn um, east and kind of meander up there, and it's really cool. And I've actually I've gone to their website and gone ahead and written down... Um, the dates that they have public viewing and they have a speaker. So I think the speaker looks really interesting. And we've been up there one time and they do a great job. <coughs> Notice, and I think I added this new just um, this semester, 
that if you do go see one of these speakers and if you also look through the telescopes, you can write that up for two lab write-ups. Hey, I think it's worth it, okay? Okay, so this again available under Doc Sharing is a map how to get to these places. And this first one, and I don't mean to insult anybody's intelligence, but this first one is how you get, <coughs> excuse me, to the Keokuk campus. So what you see here is if you were coming from, um, oops, sorry, yeah, if you were coming from, this is Burlington. No, I'm all messed up here. Okay, final answer. Burlington is north, right? Okay. If you're coming from Burlington, okay, this is what it looks like. You take 61, and there is kind of a new Casey's here, and the old Casey's here, and you turn here on Plank Road, and instead of staying on Plank Road, you have to take Messenger, and this will be SCC at the Keokuk campus. And then you find the parking lot, and you'll see where the other cars are, right? Let's see. Then this one is showing you Big Hollow Observatory. And uh, basically what I tell students is that um, if you've never been there, the best way is to take Highway 61 um, up to Burlington, okay, uh, and then go north on Highway 61. If you've gone to Minneapolis, you've gone too far. And then uh, basically... I think it's a good thing to tell you to look for the John Deere dealer. And um, uh, if you don't see the John Deere dealer, that's fine. Just take Highway 61, uh, look for Pleasant Grove Road, and actually there's a sign right here that says um, Big Hollow Recreation Area. Big Hollow. And so you turn... Um, on Pleasant Grove Road and then here on 152nd Avenue you take a I guess it would be a left so you take two lefts right I hope that helps now the thing about <laughs> the Witte Observatory complex is there used to be a bridge right here but that bridge is no longer there since they've developed the Big Hollow Recreation Area. So your GPSs don't know that that bridge is gone. <laughs> so unfortunately, we'll get people that kind of are, have their car stuck here, and they're trying to get here, and they have to backtrack back to somehow 61 and then come back in. Uh, sorry, well, 190th will work too, but I like the paved road, Pleasant Grove Road. So the last one I have here is, and I kind of already mentioned, how do you get to it? It's not a very good map. <laughs> so I would suggest that you check them out online. Or here's directions, written directions. I don't think it's a very good map. Um, when I, my husband and I went, we had a little bit kind of an interesting time trying to get there, but obviously we did. But basically you are going to go between Iowa City down here Iowa City, you know, you're going to take the, um, is it 80? I guess, is it 380? Um, north out of Iowa City, and before you get to Cedar Rapids, you are going to turn west. And that's kind of what I said. All right, <laughs> so just kind of finishing up. Um, I went ahead, teachers make courses kind of like they would like to have them if they were a student. And I'm a visual learner, so what I did was to put together these um, neat little calendars um, showing you uh, important information. So the boxes you see are actually scheduled events, okay? Um, and then I put the phase of the moon and I put some other things. Let's see, what else did I do? Um, notice that uh, each moon, each full moon of every month has a special name. So in September, the full moon is Harvest Moon. I thought that was kind of fun. And one of the things I did um, is that, I don't know if you'll find it helpful or not, but I did for online students go ahead and put the important dates like um, um, October 18th, uh, is when you need to have two labs turned in. Now, if you see any dates that you think kind of conflict with each other, let me know because it's possible. You know, I try to uh, pick a date and be consistent through all my documents, but let me know if you have, if you have any sort of questions about any dates. Um, so, yeah. 
looking at these calendars kind of gets me excited. I, uh, I like the lab component. I think I already mentioned. Um, I teach chemistry too, and chemistry labs are cool, but astronomy labs are, are, are visually cool. So, And notice down here uh, that uh, labs three and four, so your last two labs, are due at November 29th. Um, and then we're on in de December. Now, let's see. December, I did go ahead and write um, the Geminids. They're two cool, two really uh, meteor showers where the Earth is passing through a lot of debris. And um, the Geminids in December is one, and the Perseids in August is one. Um, I will say, though, that... Um, I think I mentioned when I talked about meteor showers that if there's a if it's a if the moon is very bright, eh, then that means your meteor shower is is uh, kind of not very good. So, um, I think that's it. Let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to this semester.